Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling, and of course, Global Wrestling News. Our very special guest today under the Nike hot seat is Wynn Mihalik. Wynn Mihalik had an outstanding career as a wrestler at Central Michigan for Tom Borelli, and uh, now he makes his uh, uh, living as part of the staff at the University of Illinois. He also wrestles for the Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. He's prepping for a trip to the Ukraine, and then also prepping, of course, for the Olympic trials. He joins us now. When how are you? I'm doing well, Scott. Very good, well. Thank good, you. Good morning, and, and thanks for taking the time to talk to us uh, today. Uh, when I called, I, I said, how are you? And you said, fine. I said, what are you doing? You said, I'm oh, just reading the Bible. And it was such a perfect way for us to begin our conversation, a perfect way to begin the conversation. You talk a little bit about, uh, or we talked a little bit about Mark Perry, we talked a little bit about being at the University of Illinois with Jim Heffernan and how much they appreciate you. Talk to us about your appreciation for being at Illinois and the effect you see this board have on the young men that you guys are coaching. You know, being here at Illinois is just awesome. It's an opportunity that I got after the Olympic trials, and I took it to get back into coaching, um, to be around these college kids because I really feel like that's my calling. Uh, but here at Illinois, I think that we – really concentrate not just on the wrestling aspect and the winning aspect but as a coaching staff we don't we we want to make these men these kids uh young men for for this society and make them good productive men in our society that are going to do proud for the university for their families um i think it's a concentration that we've definitely improved upon and we continue to improve upon um, as coaches, you know, it's not just about wins and losses and working hard, but it's about teaching these kids that uh, there's life beyond wrestling and you need to learn the skills through wrestling uh, to be good, productive uh, husbands and fathers and coworkers uh, throughout their lives. Win Mahalik is our guest today. 97 kilos, Win is a, uh, to say it's a stack weight, maybe even underselling it. I know you <laughs> believe you're that number one guy. Uh, you work out every single day uh, to try to improve on your performance. Having a guy like Wayne Boyd, uh, Andy Barth, uh, moreover, the organization that is Tight Mercury Wrestling Club behind you, means what to you? You know, Titan Mercury is great. They've really supported a lot of athletes, but I feel like, you know, Wayne and I have been close since the very beginning. Andy and I have talked since the very beginning, and uh, they're very supportive of what I do. You know, they they know that I have, I plan my training and my competitions well, and, and they trust that. You know, they throw in uh, what they think needs to be done, but they're very supportive. As long as I'm working hard and working towards that Olympic gold medal goal, they're super supportive of everything that I've done as a coach, as an athlete, and as a person. You know, with my wedding having just uh, concluded and moving on from that with my wife, but you know, they were very, very supportive of giving me that time after uh, U.S. Nationals Olympic Trials qualifier to uh, have that part of my life and have that joy to become a husband. <laughs> you know, becoming a husband is a big step for anybody. I mean, it's a massive undertaking, and it's a great commitment. And so it's a test. Uh, it's, you know, courageous, let's face it. You're, you're joining yeah. into a lifetime agreement with somebody to love and cherish. And, and uh, at the same time, it seems to be at odds with... Uh, a professional athlete, which is what you are, a professional athlete's career. That's Can you describe um, how patient understanding she must be? <laughs> uh, she's amazing. Uh, my wife, Jessica, is just such a wonderful person. And she knew that when we started dating that I had these huge goals of winning that Olympic gold medal. And she's been supportive since day one. You know, Through our dating, she knew that there were sacrifices that – I had to make, and if she wanted to be part of my life, that she would have to make the same sacrifices. So she's been super supportive with, uh, you know, nutrition. She joins right in my nutrition with um, the healthy eating, with 
staying away from the sweets and the stuff that is not good for my body, but also in the sacrifices that we have to make socially. Um, you know, most people go on a honeymoon right after their wedding. And she knew from the very beginning when I proposed that that honeymoon probably wasn't going to happen until later. Um, <laughs> so she she's sticking around champagne no matter how bad she wants to go down to the Bahamas or something like that. She's sticking around champagne because of my coaching and my training responsibilities. So she's she is an angel in those respects, and um, she wants me to achieve my goals because she knows that she's part of those goals as well. Were, tell us about how you proposed to her. Oh, it, it didn't go quite as planned <laughs> as I uh, had hoped, but um, I we were down on vacation around her family in Florida, and I took her on a little uh, sunset cruise by Clearwater in Florida, and we had dinner, and I got really, really nervous, um, but I took her up to the top deck so that we were outside, and I had someone take some pictures of us, and I didn't really know how I was, I was kind of fidgeting with the ring, and she noticed that I was fidgeting in my pocket, and she was kind of like, what's going on? And so I um, asked the girl to take another picture, and as I did, I came back and took the ring out real quick. And I had this whole little speech planned, um, and that speech didn't come out. It just came out, will you marry me? <laughs> uh, so it was it was a really cool experience and nerve-wracking, and uh, I'm just really happy that I got it out there because I, thought, I think that she was a little worried that it was never going to happen. Um, but, you know, I knew from pretty much the first day that um, Jess and I started hanging out that I wanted to marry her. She's an amazing person and we click from day one. So, uh, the engagement and the proposal and the wedding was just, uh, kind of planning and getting our lives in order before it happened. I like that, that you had the whole thing planned out because you're an exceedingly intelligent man. And, um, I don't think I've ever seen you without a book in your hand, unless you're wrestling. No, I, I, I try and have a book. I think uh, <laughs> there's a lot of technology out there that ruins our lives um, in some ways. It gets us away from reading, and it gets us away from knowledge, and it, it detaches us from the social interaction that um, our past generations have had. So, you know, sometimes you need to get away from that technology. We're talking with uh, Wooden Mahalik. And uh, it was a number of years ago, you and I were on the road together and uh, uh, staying at the same hotel. And I didn't know you well. I'd seen you wrestle. And, of course, uh, guys in uh, uh, their warm-ups or whatever look different. Yeah. You were walking down the hallway. Uh, I had on a pair of glasses and reading a book. And I'd never seen you wear glasses. And, and I don't know that I'd ever really truly focused on our, our mutual appreciation for reading, but right. um, you were walking toward me down this hallway, and I said, when? And you looked up, and you said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that was my confirmation that you indeed needed glasses to read. <laughs> yes, yes, I definitely, definitely need glasses. Uh, they, uh, I, I wear contacts most of the time, but glasses are uh, something I try and put on to give my eyes a rest from the contacts. Which, so. is, uh, which is smart. Of course, Guys that wear contacts in wrestling, it's a, it's a uh, it's a challenge because keeping them in your eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, there's quite a few guys that you know do wear contacts, and it's part of uh, part of the sport. You gotta you gotta get past that. Does it ever worry you when you're wrestling that um, you know contact might become an issue? Does if you lose a contact during a match, does it does it alter your perception on the match itself or your opponent? No. Um... I think the main reason why I wear contacts is, uh, for while I'm wrestling is just because I'm so used to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're in such close proximity with your opponent that having a contact out or both contacts out doesn't really affect you unless you're looking at the clock, <laughs> which I hope, you know, I never really try and do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I rely on my coaches and stuff to tell me what time it is, but. I don't think having a contact fallout really affects you too much because wrestling is such a contact sport and, um, you know, you should be able to kind of feel your way around a match, I feel, in my opinion. so I want to 
take you to a college match that just happened. Yeah. And um, it was, uh, I want to talk to you about the pressure that's been applied to this young man and perhaps uh, the emotions that took place afterwards. It was, um, it was one of the most anticipated matchups of the Big Ten season. It was Penn State and yeah. uh, Illinois. And <laughs> there was a, a young man named Isaiah Martinez who came into it ranked number one. And you know this kid. I mean, uh, ranked number one undefeated uh, at 157. Tough at any weight, but undefeated. So he comes in with that on his shoulders. We know he's not feeling well. And uh, he he loses. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of folks, uh, you know, we we got to give credit where credit's due. The kid that won won. And uh, yeah. uh, that's Nolf, Jason Nolf. And uh, Isaiah goes uh, into the locker room and uh, suffers his first defeat of his career. What was that like for him? What was, what did you see in Isaiah Martinez? And, and more than that, did you say anything to him? No, I, I didn't really get a chance to talk to Isaiah much. Um, he's such a good kid and, you know, really takes – the program on his shoulders, not just his matches, but he really feels like he is the face of Illinois wrestling right now. And so, you know, after he dealt with the loss himself, you know, as everyone else was out there coaching, um, you know, he came back to the bench and supported his teammates. Um, and once the duel was over, he signed autographs until that last kid was out of there. Um, so he is... Uh, just a really, really uh, motivated kid. And, yeah, he, he suffered a loss. Everybody suffers losses. Um, and I know a lot of people thought that he was going to go undefeated, and maybe he was going to, but he's not anymore. Um, I'm gonna so use it, a it doesn't end his career. It doesn't, no. doesn't change who that kid is. And I think he really showed that by coming back out and supporting his teammates in that duel. And then, obviously, being there for his fans and being there for the public that wants to see him succeed. Let's go through the numbers, and and I want after I go through the numbers, I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Uh, his streak spans sixty-one matches, fifty-four since the start of last season, uh, eighteen straight wins against ranked opponents. Uh, it was a seven hundred and fifty-day streak with 48 of his 61 matches by major or greater, including 26 by tech ball. Um, think of those numbers and mm -hmm. that type of dedication. What comes to your mind when I, when I, when I describe that about Isaiah? Impressive. I mean, he, he's just an impressive person, and he has continued to impress me with his work ethic and just the person he is. Um, he's a very smart kid, a very well-spoken kid, a very mature, uh, young man. And so, you know, everything about him impresses me every day. Something new comes up. He's just very intelligent in wrestling, uh, on the mat and off the mat. And, you know, he'll, he'll continue to do great things. Mm -hmm. You know, this is definitely not the end of what he is about. And I don't think he would ever want someone to think, anything differently about him he's going to continue to work hard and he's going to come back and you know hopefully he avenges that loss he said and i'll quote it's about the loss and how i can get better it doesn't feel good the streak aside it's not about that the main goal is to win a national title that's what we focus on and he's talking about the alina the coaching staff the athletes his teammates i want to talk to you a little bit about one of his other t uh, teammates Stephen rodriguez uh, yeah. ranked number six in the country at a tough weight, 165. What can you uh, explore with us about this young man? You know, Stephen Stephen is, you know, an incredible story. Co going up three weight classes from last year, um, you know, I've always thought that he was a very hard worker, very dedicated to wrestling. He might not be as uh, athletically gifted as Isaiah, but he works – just as hard and he he believes in his system he believes in what he does and that's one thing that we teach is um to our guys is you don't have to wrestle like isaiah yeah he has success with what he does but 
you know, our, our one ninety seven pounder is not Isaiah Martinez and we would never train him to wrestle the exact same way. And we don't train uh, Steven to wrestle that way. So Steven understands that and he executes his plan, um, his technique. And I, I think it's really coming around for him this year because he's really bought into his system and what we've taught him and what he wants to do on the mat. Terrific. You know, he's uh, he's just he's just a really, really nice, hardworking kid who took his thumps for a few years. And I think this year it's really paying off with him up three weight classes. It's kind of rare, but I really think that he's uh, – He's at the weight class he needs to be. Maybe maybe he should have done it sooner, but you know, we had some tough guys there with uh Jackson Morse there last year and being an all American, it, it it's hard to break the lineup in the Big Ten. Yeah, Everybody's tough. <laughs> Zane Richards has and currently ranked number two at one thirty three. Yeah. Final guy I want to talk to you about from the uh University of Illinois and the lineup there. Uh Zane Richards is a special kid. Yes. He's very special. Mm. I don't know if if a 197 pounder when you were in college can relate to that 133 pounder, but there's that uh, elemental speed. Um, yeah, you know the level change that is so fast. Yeah, uh, he's an amazing uh, takedown guy. I love to watch Zane Rich- Richards wrestle. Yeah, his his positioning is just incredible, and you know watching Zane wrestle with the discipline that he has and his positioning and his hand fight and just always being in control of the match is is just a very nice thing to see from a young man who wants to win a national championship. Our guest, 97 kilo star. And I'm going to say that because, uh, you know, you, you deserve that, that recognition at 31 years old, uh, still campaigning, uh, for the uh, the title and the opportunity, and uh, you're going to be doing some hard work. You've got Kiev, uh, Ukraine. And it's two weeks away. When February eighth, yeah. you guys are going to be departing uh, to uh, wrestle some very tough cats from around the world. But that's how you get better. Right. Right. Mm. So from Champaign, Illinois, I would imagine you'll fly out of Chicago. Uh yeah, probably fly out of Chicago. It's uh, it's a little bit of a trip, but it's probably the easiest airport to to fly overseas from. So. I, would, I would imagine that's true. And, of course, that tight Mercury Wrestling Club fully behind you in that regard. But you're looking to go over there, get some international uh, uh, matches in, in preparation for the Olympic trials. Your ultimate goal here is to represent the United States at the 2016 Olympic Games. How special would that be for you? I mean, it would be pretty awesome. Uh, it's the Super Bowl for us wrestlers, so... Uh, representing the U.S. and winning a gold medal at the Olympics is, you know, that that's that's the ultimate goal for all of us. And uh, being able to do that would just be a dream come true. But you know, that gold medal, it's it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy to make the team. It's but the goal's the the gold medal. It's not just making the team. Um, making the team's just one step that we got to do to get there. Well put. And I want to give some credit, too, to the uh, Illinois Regional Training Center as well. It's not yep. just Titan Mercury. It's Illinois Regional Training yeah. Center as well. So great home for you there. Uh, stacked weight class. You've got Kevin Gadsden in there and Zabriskie and, and Felix and Burak, uh, Kale Byers, uh, Jaden Cox, who is uh, just a lights-out cat. I love watching him compete. Yeah. Uh, Dustin Kilgore. You remember Dustin from his days at Kent State. Uh, then of course the beard bearded wonder J.D. Bergman. Uh, <laughs> he's another great guy. Jake Barner's in there. Kyle Snyder. Snyder moves up to heavyweight um, at Ohio State. Takes the red shirt off. Moves up to heavyweight. Yeah. And uh, is undersized heavy for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think his chances are? Your observation, um, not just in the uh, in the Big Ten. But for the NCAA run, I mean, at heavyweight, you've got some really talented big men. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a really talented weight with Gwiz and Adam Kuhn uh, and some other heavyweights in there as well. You know, there's, there's some really quality heavyweights that um, really, I, it, it's going to be a tough run for him. But he's a very smart wrestler. He's, he's one of the smartest wrestlers I've been around, especially for his age. 
Um, and I, you know, I think he's got a quality chance to to win it. But he, he's going to have his work cut out for him. But he did that in, this, in the world championships as well. So um, I, I'm never going to underestimate the kid. He's done some pretty amazing things. And, you know, when he sets his mind to a goal, uh, I give him a pretty good chance. He had a tremendous undergraduate, uh, or I shouldn't even say undergraduate, uh, high school career. And then the decision, of course, to go to the Olympic Training Center, I think that improved <laughs> his lot. And then... Right. Uh, uh, Ohio State was very patient and ready, willing, and able to add him to the roster, and I think that's terrific. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, neat guy. But that's, I think, indicative of a uh, majority of the people uh, at 97 kilos, and you are right there at the top of the list for me. Wynn Mahalik has been our guest. He's been live from Champaign, Illinois, and uh, the Nike hot seat. Lucky to have you, dude. Lucky, lucky Thank indeed. Thank you, Scott. Sure, appreciate the time. Best uh, to your beautiful wife. How many Thanks, months sir. has it been now? Uh, we got married January 1st, so it's been uh, <laughs> just over three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's terrific. All right. Well, congratulations to you, Wynn. Uh, safe travels to Kiev, the Ukraine. Uh, it's coming up February 8th. The Olympic trials course will follow in, uh, in April in Iowa City. A special yes. opportunity to wrestle again at Carver Hawkeye Arena. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in action. Appreciate the time today. Thanks, Scott. For all of us at Takedown, Scott Casper and Wynn Mahalik.